And joining us now is Bob Smith, who you are now the chair of the uh, Orion Veterans Memorial? That's correct. That's right. And I think right around 30 years ago is when um, they took over that property. They bought it from MDOT, I believe it was. Yes. And over the next 30 years or so, uh, different phases were developed uh, on those grounds to bring us to where we are today, this amazing veterans memorial that is, I think, one of the best in the country. Uh, talk about our Orion Veterans Memorial. Well, Joe, you're not the only one uh, that's uh, said that. Uh, we've heard it from a lot of people. It's one of the best. Uh, there's a lot of hard sweat went into it with uh, Joe Master Mateo, uh, Dr. Joe Master Mateo, who's a dentist here in town. He uh, spearheaded a lot of it. Um, Joe Gwynn was very uh, instrumental in uh, putting it together, and uh, a bunch of other people also. It wasn't just a couple of guys. It was a lot of a lot of hard work, and so um, it's really turned out nice. Dr. Joe stepped down this year. He's taking a little time off, and uh, so I'll never be able to fill his shoes. I'm not even going to try to fill his <laughs> shoes, yeah. but uh, he is a he, he did an amazing job, and uh, he's still is still with us. So he, he still comes to the meetings once in a while, and that. But uh, he just wanted to step down and let somebody else take over. They couldn't so, find yeah. anybody good, so they picked me. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone stepped backward, and you were standing. There. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> now it's amazing to see what the Veterans Memorial has become. It's been developed in phases, where over time they added that center uh, sculpture, that statue, which is amazing. That uh, I remember Dr. Joe said you could either interpret it as a soldier going off to war or returning home from war. Um, and over time they added the stage and. There's a victory garden, and there's a, there's even a monument for war dogs that um, that the, the monument pays tribute to. So that's awesome. Over the years, we've seen them add piece by piece, and what the memorial has become is a gathering place for events. You know, throughout the the relatively warm weather uh, that we have here in Michigan, including, of course, Memorial Day, uh, where we have a, an amazing ceremony there. There's coffee with veterans that takes place there, um, other events. But we have one coming up, and it's a bit of a somber occasion. It's not something to celebrate. It's more of a Correct. remembrance. Um, but talk about what's going to be happening on September 11th. September 11th, is, a few years ago, was deemed uh, Patriot Day. And we do a 9-11 ceremony every year. And this year it will be at 7 o'clock in the evening. Uh, it's a Wednesday this year. Um, but uh, we'll be uh, doing again what we've been doing for just about 20 some years now. Yeah. And, uh, and that is remembering those who uh, got into the World Trade Center, lost their lives, people that will never be right again from it. Yeah. And it's, a, it's something that I'm very, very dear to my heart because it's, it was a un, it wasn't, um, provoked in any way. It was just we were getting up and going to work that day or doing yeah. whatever you were doing, nice sunny day, mm -hmm. and that happened. And uh, so I, I want to keep it in everybody's mind. Yeah. I mean, one of the, I, I don't want to prioritize anything, but one of the biggest tragedies to come out of that day is the fact that the casualties were so skewed toward first responders. Now, you're the former fire chief here in Orion Township. Um, so that must have hit you hard to see that those first responders that charged into the World Trade Centers uh, resulted in such a large loss of life. Yes, and, and the thing is, is what I tell people is I was also in the military and stuff like that. You train for things like that in the military. In the fire service, you don't really train to, to go into such a catastrophic situation. Uh, you're usually building fires and stuff like that. and minor explosions and stuff like that, but nothing to that. And those those people that day never hesitated for a second. They mm -hmm. never waited, they got in there. In fact, uh, this year, uh, I, I, I'm i always seeing new pictures of, of that day and everything, and somebody posted a picture this year of, of uh, Engine 18 going across the bridge to the um, World Trade Center, and that was the last picture of it. Mm -hmm. Everybody on that uh, in that uh, crew passed away, it was, passed away that day. 
and you know, it was over 2,900 people that day between first responders and, and uh, uh, civilians. Yeah. And before I came today, I, I like to look up and see where we stand as of today. And I couldn't find anything past 2020, but over 110,000 people, first responders and civilians, have been affected or passed away because of it. Because of health. the residual, the, yep. uh, the, we all saw the video of the clouds of debris that they inhaled, that they, yep. they breathed in, and that took its toll too, right? Yes, a lot of, a lot of uh, breathing problems still today and stuff like that, uh, and it's just, it was such a senseless act, and I just, you know, like I said, I, I try to keep it dear, 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 near and dear to my heart because I, I believe that uh, we, we could never forget this. Yeah. Where were you that morning? Do you remember what that day was like for you when I you first got I can tell you word? exactly down to the minute where exactly, I was. Yeah. I was sitting in uh, the Kellogg Center. It's an uh, uh, auditorium over at Michigan State University. It was our first day for the annual uh, fire inspectors com convention or to get together. Um, and I, we were sitting there, and some of us, some guys were out walking around, you know, they, it was supposed to start at nine o'clock. And, uh, you know, others like myself, I was just sitting there looking at the materials for the day and everything. And some guy come in and he says, some fool just flew into the World Trade Center. Mm -hmm. Well, we kind of blew it off because we didn't know what the weather was like over there. And uh, some years ago, there was a B-17 that flew into the Empire State Empire, Building yeah, because yeah. of the cloud and the fog and that. So. Yeah. Most of us just kind of thought, well, you know, something terrible happened. And next next time it, uh, you know, he come in and he says, the second plane hit the other tower. So that's when we all got up and we just, we stood there in a daze most of the afternoon looking at the, just kept watching it and stuff like that. Some of the guys went back to their departments and stuff like that. We didn't really know what we were going to do, you know. Yeah. I talked to the former chief at that time because I was just the fire uh, marshal. And I says, are we going to deploy anybody in that? And he says, no. And you know, a lot of people did deploy their people, and uh, they got over there, and some were used, some weren't. But uh, yeah. it just—it's one of those things you just didn't know what to do. You just well, we'd never see anything like no. it before, so it's all brand new. You don't know how to respond. Yeah. Do you remember where you were, Joe? I was sound asleep because uh, normally I start my day a little bit later, and my sister had been watching on television. Uh, she called once to, uh, to tell me what was going on, and I slept through her first call, and she left a message on my answering machine. The second call, where, where she saw the plane live on TV flying to the building, uh, that woke me up. And so when I picked up the phone, she said, turn on the TV right now. And so I sat down, turned on the TV, had her on the phone and watched things unfold. Never even occurred to me to get ready for work. I just sat on the sofa all day watching the events unfold. And my phone just lit up all day as people were calling. I was talking. And the one, the one moment that really sticks with me, I remember talking to a buddy of mine. And you see the two towers on television, the smoke's coming out of them. And I remember seeing the antenna on the one building start to move. And I'm, and it was unbelievable. Like, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I'm like, is that antenna moving? And then you see the building start to collapse. And I, I, that never occurred to me. I thought that somehow they would repair the damage and they would go on standing. But when that first one went down, I, I just, I got numb. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And then it was just a matter of time before the second one went down. And then you're sitting there looking at empty space where these two buildings once stood, and I will never, ever forget that. What about what you? you? It was, I think it was a Tuesday morning, uh, yep. if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah. And I was getting ready to go to work at the radio station, and I would always listen to the radio while I was uh, getting ready. And I heard that, and the first tower. I'm on my way there, I'm listening to the radio, second tower. So right away, you, you're a terrorist attack. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just too ironic. Um, and it was a whole different day at oh, work. Yeah. The whole world changed that. And we yeah. weren't a news radio station. And we had no way of reporting the news. We were just reciting what we saw off TV. And mm -hmm. we had some programs that would continued as normal, which was odd. Yeah. And then we had other shows that they just turned their direction around and talked about what they were seeing on TV and what this means for Americans and how this might bring us together. And it did. 
It brought a lot it of did Americans initially, together. initially, like those first few months uh, after the the incidents, uh, everyone, you know, you'd kind of wave at strangers. You'd be sitting in your car and you'd look over at someone and nod. And there's there was this unity for a little while, and then things took a turn for the worse, and uh, it changed us as as people, as a society. And uh, we I don't think we've ever recovered from it. Yeah. No. no, but it's tough. So what we have now is remembering, right? Yeah, and having these uh, remembrance ceremonies. Yeah. What's the right way to say that? I there's no really right way. It's <laughs> just remembering. Yeah. And, and my my thought this year is not to be political, but we're a fractured country right now, mm -hmm. and they could attack us again. And if yeah. they did. What are we going to do? Like you said, the next day, everybody was together. Everybody was hugging each other. Everybody was flying a flag and everything like that. Would it happen today if uh, if they did it again? You know, yeah. and that's what scares me about the whole thing is we're really a fragile country right now. Yeah. And uh, so that's why that's why I push this every year. Um, I've always had first responders that have spoke. Uh, Talk yeah. about your keynote speaker this year. This year, my keynote speaker is uh, Kim Murbanowski. She's our township treasurer. And last year when she was here and uh, we were talking about it, uh, she brought up some interesting things and I thought she'd be a good one because I've always had first responders uh, of some type, you know, guys that were really there at, at Ground Zero and others affected by it. Last year we had a fabulous speaker. She was a lieutenant colonel. She was President Bush's uh, nurse at that time. She yeah, gave us, yep. Yeah, she gave us our an insight to what it was like on the airplane, and and they didn't even know on Air Force One where they stood or anything. And this, but this year, I figured, you know, we need to get back to, we we know what the first responders went through, but what's the families of the first responders? What did they go through? You know, they, you know, in the military or even police or fire, you know, you kiss your husband or your wife goodbye for the day or for the month or whatever always in the back of your mind that you know that they may not come home. But this here was such a tragic thing. Not only was was your spouse not going to come home or your loved one wasn't going to come home, maybe your neighbors and everything else. Nobody knew what was going on. And so that's, this year I want to get a family perspective and what they went through back home here and stuff like yeah. that. So, Yeah, and, and you know, not only do you remember the lives lost on that day, but, you know, I've obviously attended the ceremony every year and what I come away with is just a renewed respect for our first responders who like you said not knowing what the situation is just charging forward and trying to help people and and putting their lives on the line so if if anything good were to come out of that day is is this respect for law enforcement and fire fighting that uh, they're all running toward the danger when most people are running right. away so that's the first uh, time I remember the term first responder yeah yeah I, I don't know if we used it before right but it certainly became a national way of describing all of these folks that put put job over everything else yeah, yeah we always kept it even before we were first responders what we included was military this time you know so anybody you know, it was the military and the first responders. Now yeah. we're all one. Yeah, yeah. And that's where it became so well known and stuff like that. But uh, it's a, uh, I, I don't even know, you know, and Joe can attest to this. We still see people that get emotional at the memorial and stuff like that when we have the 9-11 oh, yeah. ceremony. And it's 23 years later. So anybody below the age of 28 to 29 have no clue what's going on, you know, because... It's shocking. Yeah, it's shocking to think that there are people born in, you know, they, what do they call them, millennials, that have no memory of, of what had happened other than watching the anniversary specials that air on, on the History Channel. Right. Know? Yeah. Well, it's like when we watch D-Day things. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, it, it was impactful, but nowhere near living it. Yeah. So... It is important work, and we're glad that you're out there doing it, Bob. Yep. So September 11th falls on a Wednesday this year, and the ceremony starts at 7 p.m. at the Orion Veterans Memorial. Uh, I see no reason why the memorial shouldn't be packed with residents that day. Uh, just to say thank you to the, to the police and fire and military that will be present uh, that day. And uh, it's shocking to think that 
we're just a couple of years away from the 25th anniversary, which yeah. blows my mind. Yeah, and I'd like to say that, you know, it's it's the middle of the week. It's a busy time for everybody with school and everything getting out, you know, getting settled back into school and that. But there's 2,900 people that wish they could be here too to to, right. to talk about their school and their kids and and their work and all that other stuff. So if we could just give them an hour, hour and ten minutes to, of their time to show the you know the, that we still remember these people and we will, we care about them and stuff like that. Definitely, yeah. So hopefully we'll see you on uh, Wednesday, September 11th, 7 p.m. at the Orient Veterans Memorial. Bob, thanks for coming out and uh, well, and thanks for having me. Us. I always like to come here and get started. I'm dealing with the fact I'm I can't even believe it's this time of year already. Mm -hmm. This this year has blew by so fast. <laughs> it has. Do you know the Lake Orion High School football season kicks off tomorrow? I believe so. Uh, we're in the football frame of mind. So, so they're back at it before the students are. That's right. Wow. Yeah, their season kicks off before the school season. Yeah, the so, first yeah, games in Northville. It's that time of the year. It's hard to believe. That's, that's my hometown. Well, one of my hometowns is Northville. And yeah, yeah. So Awesome. All right, thanks again, Bob.